Namaste. My name is Julius and I get a band 9 in the IELTS speaking exam. Today, I'll be sharing with you my students' experience of getting a band 7 in the IELTS speaking test. She took it two weeks ago and it was her first time taking the IELTS exam. She is a Filipino medical technologist who is currently working in Middle East. She wants to work in the US so she needs to get a band 7 in the IELTS speaking test. And I'm very happy because she made it. Well, she had 11 coaching sessions with me. She studied with me before she decided to take the IELTS test. So in this video, I'll be sharing with you the weaknesses that I noticed in her, how I addressed them, and what was her actual experience of taking the IELTS exam. Let us start with the most important part of the IELTS speaking test, and that's a part three. Her weaknesses include hesitation because of the lack of ideas. And because of that, her answers were incoherent. Simply because she's beating around the bush, her answers didn't have any direction at all. As a result, she became less confident. So if you notice, all of these problems are interconnected. So how did I address these weaknesses? Well, I needed to understand the root cause of these weaknesses. Based on my observation, I found out that she simply didn't have any idea of some certain topics. Well, of course, if you don't have any idea of a certain topic, you have nothing to say. Well, you may try harder to compose your answer, but your answer is illogical. You keep on talking for the sake of answering the question, but your answer doesn't have any direction at all. Your answer is unorganized, you're hesitant or less confident, and you just feel frustrated. And that's exactly what happened to my student during our first few coaching sessions. So what were the solutions? Well, I had two. First was I simply encouraged her to read informative articles and topics that are common in IELTS speaking because the way to acquire knowledge is to read. Read, read, and read. The second one was very important. I simply told her to be honest, to be true to herself. I told her that if she didn't have any idea, then just tell the examiner, but in a strategic and natural way, not just saying, I don't know. For example, let's say one of the questions in part three has something to do with politics in your country. Let's imagine that the examiner is asking you this question. How does your government protect the national security of your country? Well, that's a very difficult question, especially if you aren't into reading or watching political news, or you're the kind of person who doesn't really care about politics in your country. For sure, you will be having a hard time answering that question. So don't force yourself to make an answer to a question which you don't really know how to answer. Just be honest with your examiner. For example, let me give you an example. Let's imagine that I'm not really into politics. I mean, I'm not into politics. I don't like politics. And I get that question. So I can be honest with my examiner. I can simply answer like this. It's such a shame to admit that I'm not into politics at all, as I find it complicated to understand. Well, if only I had seriously studied politics when I was a student, I could have provided you with a great answer right now. But you know what? This question has made me realize that I should start to cultivate an interest in politics so that if I meet someone who's interested in talking about politics, I'll be able to manage a good conversation with that person. Something like that. Well, the examiner cannot force me to really give an answer to that question simply because I just don't have any idea. I don't know how our government protects the national security of our country. Now, the IELTS speaking exam is not a quiz B that you are required to really provide the right answer. No, it's only an examination testing your ability to express yourself naturally using the English language. Remember that. 
Okay, now let's look at my answer. Now, despite not providing or giving an answer to how our uh, government protects the national security of our country, I still can get the highest band score. Why? Look at uh, the vocabulary, the expressions that I used. They are used naturally. Look at the sentence construction, the grammar. They are all used in an advanced and natural way. So even if you don't have any idea, as long as you express your thoughts in English naturally and at length, not saying, I don't know, it's still possible to get the highest band score. Remember this, there is no way in the band descriptors requiring you to give the correct answer to every question. No, there is none, nothing. You are just evaluated based on your ability to express your thoughts in English naturally and confidently. So it's very important to familiarize the IELTS speaking band descriptors. Do not take the exam unless you completely understand how the examiner evaluates you. All right, now let's learn from my student's experience of taking the actual IELTS speaking exam. She said that she spoke confidently and naturally. There was a moment when she was lost because she forgot the term. However, she expressed herself naturally by asking the examiner to give her some time to think since she's out of words and added that it's because she's starving. <laughs> See, that's very natural. That's the way. Being able to handle the conversation naturally and of course, having fun communicating with the examiner. When you're having fun, you're actually showing confidence. Before we continue, I would love to give a shout out to the following successful test takers. Band 7.5, Viranji Sinali. She was aiming for 7.5 and really achieved it. She actually used my reviewer or ebook before taking the exam. Band 7, Regine Clores. She aimed to get 7 and successfully made it. She also used my ebook or reviewer before taking the exam. I'm very happy that my ebooks or reviewers somehow helped you achieve your target band score. I just want to say that my ebooks or reviewers are currently on sale, and if you are interested, just send me an email. Also, I will be giving another shout out later for another set of successful test takers. I'm doing this because I want you to be inspired, and I'm very much hoping that you will be the next person whom I can give a shout out in my next video. Now let's move on to part two. The problems that I noticed in her whenever she delivered a monologue are hesitation, simply because she did not use any structure to organize her ideas, so she became hesitant adding more ideas. Second, only using simple sentence construction. Third, minor mistakes in verb tense to be specific the use of past form or past participle of the verb. As for the problem of hesitation, I asked her to structure her story because that's the only way to organize the details of her story. Like in a movie, when you watch a movie, there is a structure, the story has a structure. When you read a short story or a novel, there is a structure. The details are not all over the place, right? So I shared my own structure with her, the one that I actually used when I took the IELTS exam. But I also gave her the freedom to make her own structure. Now pay close attention to this. When you structure your story, you will be guided accordingly. You will know what to say first, what to say next, and when to end your story. Because you have a guide. The structure is your guide. When you structure your story, your story is easy to understand, and that will definitely help you achieve fluency and coherence. Now, as for grammar, I encouraged her to use complex structure, like conditional sentences, especially the third conditional, so that she would not only use basic sentence structure. As for her mistakes in verb tense, I never stopped reminding her to pay close attention to the verb tense used in the cue card. Every after our session or our class, 
I gave her my evaluation, pointing out her mistakes in verb tense or verb tenses. Uh, to be specific, the use of past form or past participle of the verb. I did that over and over again so that she would be reminded. She wouldn't forget. All right, now let's learn from her own experience of taking the IELTS speaking exam, specifically in part two. Her cue card was about boredom. Well, she just made up a story that is generic, like she got bored waiting for her friends and she forgot to bring something that could entertain her, like a book. Then for her to stretch her story, she just simply added one helpful idea, that is, her phone's battery was drained. She also applied the strategies that I shared with her during our coaching sessions. Very well done. Here are more band 7 achievers. Gorleen Kaur, Rohanika Sharma, Harleen Kaur, and Fancy. Thank you all for watching my videos. I'm very happy that you reached your target band score. I wish you the best in life. Congratulations, you deserve it. All right, let's move on to part one. This is the easiest. Her common problems include hesitation. Again, hesitation because of the lack of ideas. Well, I already discussed about this earlier, so I don't want to repeat it. So the second problem was she kept on using the expression, I think. So she used the expression, I think, over and over again. So I told her not to do that because that would not help her get a good mark in the Criterion Lexical Resource. So I introduced some alternatives or good expressions such as, uh, I suppose, I guess, I reckon, I believe. But I also told her to use them in a more natural way. So it's very important to vary your vocabulary or your expression uh, so that you would get a good mark in the Criterion Lexical Resource. Okay, let's learn from her experience of taking the IELTS exam, especially in part one. Well, she got topics that we practiced in our coaching sessions, the topics of New Year and daily routines. Actually, these two topics appeared in the previous quarter. So it is very important to review the previous topics because there's a huge possibility that you would get the old topics. But honestly, if you're creative, strategic, well-prepared, and confident with your English communication skills, I really believe that topics won't matter at all because whatever topic questions the examiner asks you, you will surely be able to provide answers. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to support me, just give me a like or subscribe to this channel. I'll be posting videos related to IELTS speaking. Don't forget to watch the videos that appear on your screen right now because they can definitely help you. Until next time, have a lovely day. Bye.